We're going to stay in Devonport where a service is about to begin for Benjamin the Cat, who called the library his home for more than 15 years. Benjamin wasn't your average cat. Locals say he was part of the fabric of that community, loved by all as he lived his life at the library. Here's librarian Anne Buckles. He decided he loved the library. He had a perfectly good home. They loved him to bits, but he had other intentions and he would keep showing up, showing up. And they just said, look, you know, he doesn't want to stay with us. Would the library like him? So it didn't need a second asking. Yes, please. And this is where, you know, the old building, the old library that was here on the reserve. Um, of course, he couldn't come in at night. So he was out there to the elements and terrorising every dog that dared put a paw on the reserve. No way could they get past Benjamin. And so, so wait a sec, so he would just wander in the front door when the library opened, would he? So he would just, yes, well, in the old library, of course, we, we didn't have automatic, um, you know, he, he would have to be let in. He'd always come to the back door of the old library. The new library, of course, he had his wonderful... Cat door, electronic, he was microchipped, only he could come in. So he was very spoilt with the new library, yeah. So, and he soon learnt pretty quick, oh, this is a good place to be. Yes. Come in at night, stay in for the night, and he was just in our little workroom at the back. So he didn't have free range of the library, obviously, but just the workroom. And, yeah, and then, of course, all the adventures he had at night. And you would have to, you know, to talk to the businesses. There's things we don't even know of what he did. And there's so many stories. I mean, it would fill a book. It and, really would. It's lovely, isn't it? Because it is like a storybook. And, the, and there is no the library. During the day, did he, could he wander around the library wherever he wanted to go? He did. He and, did. And did people, and and, he would usually sleep and find a little posse and sleep. Did he have a section he liked? Were, were, were there any books he was particularly partial to? <laughs> well, he loved, he loved the bean bags. The bean bags in the children's area, the bean bags around in the teenage area, the side seats, wherever the sun was. If the sun was coming through, the, that, that's where he'd like to be. And, and, did, course, people, and did people pat him? Did people come? Oh, and, heck. And lots yes, of people, people came. People would come in looking for him. They'd come in looking for him. Where's Benjamin? Where's Benjamin? And and then we found overseas people that had heard about Benjamin were coming in, wanting to see him, wanting to take photos of him. It was it was absolutely. Wait, wait, you incredible. got you got foreign tourists at the Devonport Library coming foreign to see. Foreign tourists, yes, <laughs> absolutely. What a, what a beautiful story. Absolutely, and we even had repeat visitors. And these this couple, they were from Texas, and they've been four years in a row, and they would come over to Devonport to see Benjamin. Yeah, so he was world famous, <laughs> absolutely oh. world famous. Yeah, yeah and so. so and so he lived a good long life, didn't he? Although it was cut he short, did. wasn't it? It was cut extremely short, and as he got older, he was slow. Um, he suffered from arthritis, and he was on medication for that. So, but his, you know, he would always use the crossing to go across the road. Sometimes be a bit forgetful and stop halfway there and think, eh, which way do I want to go? <laughs> um, but then he would plod on. But he had a preference for sleeping in the gutter, which just, oh, my oh. goodness. And that's, yeah, he was asleep in the gutter and a car pulled in and, yeah, and ran him over. So that's, that's how his wee life ended. So you, uh, you, yeah. you've lost a great friend there, haven't you? Oh, well, the whole community, the whole community. I was, well, I guess I was sort of the main carer for him because I live locally, so I was able to be, you know, coming and going. When we were closed, I would come down and feed him. Um, if he'd gone missing, which he did, I would drag my husband out at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, come on, we've got to look for the cat. <laughs> <laughs> he was not impressed by that, but anyway. I don't, I don't blame no. him, just <laughs> quietly. And the other thing is about cats is they're never grateful, are they? I bet Benjamin never said thanks once. No, no. <laughs> not at all. But we, we, you only had to look at his little face and no. And as out the lovely vet, Shaw Vets, um, they were just magnificent, absolutely. And Neil, the main vet there, used to always say, well, I'm sure Benjamin appreciates all the care we give him. So <laughs> we figured, OK, he probably does, yes. Anne Buckles talking about Benjamin the Cat, who lived his life at the Devonport Library, a great listener. Chris was just driving past the library and says the turnout for Benjamin's farewell is huge.